Well, I got your postcard from California. I followed it up with an email. You didn't get that? Oh, no, I didn't do it on an Underwood. Yeah, I'll try it again. Thank you. How am I supposed to make my album email to California if Al Jardine doesn't get my messages? Those of you who have watched some of my previous concert videos before kind of know what to expect from today, I think. I was lucky enough to see on August 4th uh, Al Jardine and his Endless Summer Band, and then August the 5th, able to see the Beach Boys, so Mike and Bruce. And I thought today I'd go through, talk about some of the goodies I picked up, and talk about how the shows were. So we'll start with Al's show. I had never seen Al, uh, his solo act, before. I've met Al Jardine once in 2018 at a concert there. It used to be when he toured with Brian Wilson, you could buy a backstage pass. That hasn't been the case for years. But I got a chance to see his solo group. I was very curious. It was a long drive, the furthest I've ever gone for a concert. But all told, I was pretty pleased. For those of you who don't know, Al Jardine's hometown, his birth town, is Lima, Ohio. He only lived there for a few years before moving away, eventually ending up in California and meeting the Wilsons and becoming part of the Beach Boys. But before then, uh, you know, he lived there. His dad worked at the local locomotive plant and so on. And uh, he seems to have a lot of fond memories of visiting the town and whatnot. And so he was performing third on a bill of three acts. He was kind of the main draw that day. The first act was local artist Kevin Ashbaugh and his group. And uh, they were pretty good. They did about six songs, about a half an hour. And, uh, you know, just ones to kind of mellow the audience out, get them warmed up. Did a nice job overall, I thought, and he was a pretty personable guy and, and had some good banter going. The second act was the Endorphins, another local Ohio group. They did also about a half an hour. They weren't as, as good, I think, as Ashball was. Um, the mixing and the sound, whatever it was, on their group wasn't that good. It was hard to understand the lyrics and stuff. And their set was kind of all over the place. Kevin Ashba did a lot of original songs. The Endorphins did almost all covers, or maybe all covers. They did like Bruno Mars, Uptown Funk was one. The Proclaimers, 500 Miles. And they were trying to get the audience to stand up and dance and carry on and stuff. And that just didn't happen. And all told, that was kind of a weak act. I thought kind of the, the uh, low light of the evening there. So it was interesting. Between each act there was about 15 minutes for the roadies to come on, tear down stuff. And finally, after about an hour of the, you know, the other shows, an hour and some change, Al Jardine finally came out and to do his song with his group. Now some of his group members might be recognizable. On percussion, for example, is Bobby Figueroa. We'll talk more about him later. I actually got a chance to talk to him. Pretty interesting stuff. I had emailed ahead of time and asked if there was a way I could go backstage and talk to Al, and I was told that was completely up to Al. They couldn't reserve anything ahead of time. That was a shame. I also recognized Proben Gregory, the guitarist from Brian Wilson's group. We'll come back to him later. And apparently there were some former Brian Wilson band members like Gary Griffin in the audience that night, so that's pretty neat too, that the fact that there's still a lot of familiar faces and whatnot. So Al came out there, and the first thing actually wasn't a song at all. The local Rotary, the local Chamber of Commerce, whoever, uh, they took the time to present an award to him. The local museum is going to have a display just for Al Jardine, had like a record and some photos, and, and the man presenting it joked to Al, pointed to a picture of, you know, 1964 Al Jardine and asked, do you know who that young man is? That kind of thing. And Al seemed really touched by it and thought it was a super nice gesture, so that was good. And then they gave him a little, like a, almost looked like a framed scroll uh, for his own possession, you know, that he could keep as a thank you from the town. So that was actually really nice. So and then we jumped into the actual songs. This is a set list. I'll explain how I got that at the end there. This is also Matt Jardine's handwriting. I got a chance to meet Matt Jardine, which is pretty cool. So we open with California Girls. That was really good. Now he only has a small band, about six people. And this is an outdoor amphitheater, Pangle Pavilion. Very nice place, though. Very nice establishment. Uh, the only issue I had was the seating. We had wooden folding chairs and they got kind of uncomfortable after a while, but um, what can you do, right? So we have California Girls first. You can see that was moved up in the set. Makes sense to be the intro. That was the official Beach Boys intro song for many years. Surfin, a rare chance Al Jardine said to start at the beginning, so do the first Beach Boys song. Uh, they shortened it. They cut out a verse. Don't know if that was intentional or not. 
It wasn't a great performance. It was really good to hear it live for a change. I've never heard surfing live. Surfing Safari, Al joked that for our second song, we needed at least one more chord. They did Surfing Safari, that was fun. You see Do It Again, Catch a Wave in Hawaii. The sound kind of went ballistic during Catch a Wave in Hawaii, and Al's mic cut out. Now Al actually stopped at one point right after a song and said, I'm getting feedback from my mic, fix that or something. It was different there. Uh, he still did a nice job on it, and those songs got the audience moving. And then Surfer Girl, you can see down there, he talked about how you know the song's important to Brian Wilson, and you know it was the first slow song the group did. Don't worry, baby. You can see Little Deuce Coop. That was probably the one of the biggest audience moments of the night. There, the crowd went nuts for Little Deuce Coop. I was next to a fellow, really nice guy, older guy named Bob. Said, well, Bob, how you doing? You know, here's here 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 here's some good music, that kind of thing. So Bob was pretty cordial, but he was waiting for the car songs. He wanted them to hurry up and get to the car songs. The other person next to me was this little old English lady who said she'd met Al Jardine back in the 60s. And uh, she was really nice. I guess she'd moved from England to Ohio and stuff, was there with her husband. And she was really hoping to meet Al Jardine. So I'll talk more about her later, too. And we got to Little Deuce Coop, and I get around. That went over really well. Uh, Matt Jardine doing the falsetto vocals and doing a really nice job on them overall. In My Room, nice slow song there. It got a little bit of a build-up from Al. They did not do vegetables. I don't know if they cut vegetables for time. I'm assuming they did, because Al did stop periodically and talk some. You know, he didn't really have a lot of memories of growing up in the community, but he knew, like, about what his father had done, and he knew some of the local sites and things. So, um, you know, I don't know. I'm assuming that's why they cut vegetables, which is a shame, because I was really hoping to hear vegetables. There's a performance of it from some other venue on YouTube, um, but I wish I could have heard it, and I didn't there. Did do California Saga, and that was really good. That, uh, that one I liked. Now we have Surf's Up. Now, it actually began with Al doing a long intro about, you know, the beauty of this song. You know, it's one of Brian Wilson's best, and I thought at first it would be God Only Knows, because it was a little too early in the show for Good Vibrations, but it was Surf's Up, and this was one of two songs, I guess I should show the smile box because it is Surf's Up, this is one of two songs that absolutely, completely disengaged the audience. Like, they couldn't wait for Surf's Up to be done. Matt Jardine did a nice job. He hit those high vocals, but Columnated Ruins, Domino, and, you know, Dove Nested Towers, The Hours to Strike the Straight Quick Silver Moon, and all that, did not appeal at all to an audience that came to hear songs about hot rods and surfing and California girls and stuff. So, Surf's Up, you know, it was met with a pretty tepid reception. And I think maybe Al and company might have felt kind of bad about that. I'm glad they did it, because it's, you know, a song I don't think I've ever seen live. But, you know, I was like, eh, you know, uh, I felt kind of bad. Then we have Sail on Sailor. Bobby Figueroa did that, just as he'd done back in the 80s there. Here's, I talked about this, not last July 4th, but the one before. So cool to hear him do the lead on Sail on Sailor, and I really like his version of it. So, it was great to see him up on his drum kit going crazy. And then uh, Sterling Smith is a person who has a, a Beach Boys writing connection, I believe. I'm not too familiar with him. If you know more about him, please do comment below, because I didn't really explain it. But they, I wanted to dedicate Golly Knows to him. He passed away recently. Apparently some of his family was specially invited by Al Jardine to attend. So uh, it was a nice gesture to do a dedication. And Golly Knows went really well. Sloop John B. Al messed up the words a tiny bit, but not too bad. Not as bad as some of the other shows I've seen. And we have Wouldn't It Be Nice, and Good Vibrations, and then Help Me Rhonda as kind of the finale there, of course. And he got really into that, and the audience liked it. It, it was an older crowd, so there weren't too many people getting up and jumping around and being crazy, but you could tell they still appreciated the, the oldies there. Surf's Up was really the only song kind of in the core that didn't um, go over too well. And then his band got up and left the stage, but no one got up to leave. At some shows I've been to, as soon as they're done with the main performance, getting ready for the encore, people just get up and go. It's not what you want to do, you want to wait. And uh, plus we knew we hadn't heard Barbara Ann yet, so. Uh, finally comes out and now talks about this song he really wants to do and how much it means to him. And he told about his dad, you know, moving the family from Ohio to New York State and then to San Francisco, California, and then elsewhere and whatnot. And uh, he said this was all building up to this song, Postcard from California. And he did Postcard from California. Uh, Matt Jardine sang Glenn Campbell's part. And the audience was not into it. I mean, they were just, 
You know, for an encore, I guess you usually think of a really like upbeat song, something that the crowd's gonna go crazy with and really like. And Postcards from California was not it. They didn't really want to hear that, which is a shame because it is a pretty song. And he talked a little bit about Glen Campbell afterwards. I thought that was nice. Then we did Barbara Ann. I knew that was coming. Surfing USA. That was great. That really got the audience moving. And Fun, Fun, Fun is the finale. Bob next to me said, Oh, I better do Fun, Fun, Fun because that's my favorite Beach Boys song. So, and they did. He had to wait till the end, but they did it. So Bob was happy. But uh, yeah. So after the show, a bunch of us ran up to the front because there's a stage, some space there for equipment and security, and then a metal fence and then the seats. Went up there and tried to kind of beg and, you know, plead with Al or someone to come out back, uh, or come back on stage, I should say, sign stuff, talk to people, do photo ops, whatever. Uh, Bobby Figueroa came out first, almost immediately after the show. He signed a few things. I didn't have a marker. Uh, usually I bring one to concerts. I completely forgot. So he couldn't sign my, brought my Endless Harmony CD, he couldn't sign that, and the, there was a boy standing next to me, a young teen boy who wanted to talk to him, and, and was talking about like the Long Beach concert from the 80s, he said, that's my favorite Beach Boys show, I was like, jeez kid, that's an unusual choice, but he didn't lend me his marker, what the heck, I know teenagers hate me, but they don't have to like, not lend me their markers when I need them. But Bobby Figueroa was super nice, he did some wacky poses and stuff on stage, I'll show you a photo here very soon. And then Proben Gregory came out, and I'll show you his picture, because I actually talked to him more so than uh, did Bobby Figueroa or anyone else there. He is down, yeah, right in there, Proben Gregory. And he came out, he didn't really have any big spotlight moments during the show, but he came out and talked, and he was apparently kind of miffed because uh, he wasn't using his own equipment. He had to, I guess, borrow guitar stuff. I don't really, I don't play guitar, so I don't know all the terms, but I had to borrow all this equipment from other people or rent it from somewhere, something like that. It was kind of weird. I don't know if they have a rider or if they, like, tour with their own instruments. I'm not 100% sure about that. But anyway, um, he talked a lot about that, and then, um, I didn't have the set list yet, but he was giving away his guitar picks. I didn't get one of those, sadly. But he said he'd be back out. And then Matt Jardine came out and he talked to everybody a little bit, did a couple photos and stuff, but he gave me this set list, the one that he used. He pulled it off the stage, and, and when Probe and Gregory came back, the lady next to me gave me her pen so he could sign his name. He, he signed it and drew a little doodle there, but super nice. So Bobby Figueroa, Matt Jardine, and Probe and Gregory, all super nice. I wish I had more photos. I wish we'd be able to get closer for like a, you know, arm around the shoulder, thumbs up kind of photo op thing, but nah, what can you do? Al came out. Now there's a whole bunch of us waiting there, and this little English lady next to me is, you know, hoping and hoping and hoping that she can finally see Al again. And Al looks at all these people, mostly middle-aged guys in Hawaiian shirts with baseball caps holding Pet Sounds records and markers, you know. And Al looks at everyone, he goes, shrugs his shoulders, shakes his head, then does a bow. If you watch any of my early YouTube videos, I do that bow at the end. And he did that exact same one, and he left. So, I don't know. Um, his son did come out and take a few things backstage to have him sign and brought them back out to the people, but, you know, he didn't really hang around. And the English lady next to me was kind of disappointed. And she said, oh, I don't think it looks very good for us today. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. And she said, you'd better get home. Your mother's going to be worried about you. And that sort of thing. So it was funny, though. Uh, she was so sweet. She said she was 87, but uh, she did not get to see Al again. Sorry, traffic's going by, unfortunately. And I didn't get to talk to him again either. When I met him in 2019, he didn't really have much to say, but I did make him laugh. I made a joke about cotton fields. They took two photos of us together. I'll put one later in the video. And um, I just said that it's a good thing they took two. We can send one of them cotton fields back home. And he thought that was really funny. Sadly, I didn't get a chance to, to redo that. But all told, very good performance. A small band, kind of an unusual set list, but I think Al Jardine's solo shows are certainly worth it. It was a lot of fun, and if you ever get a chance to go to Lima, the Pangle Pavilion is a really nice place to see a show. Open air, maybe just bring a cushion for your seats. All right, let's, I'll post a few photos of Bobby Figueroa and company, and a few from the show and Al uh, now. So please enjoy them, but stay tuned for info on the Beach Boys concert.
I don't usually do two concerts in a row, but this was kind of the best. I kicked around the Beach Boys show in Marysville, Ohio, so I could meet Mike Love and join Club Kokomo and presumably drink lots of Club Kokomo cocktails, but that was a little far. You know, I'd driven really far for this one. I want to do that again. I kicked around going to Cleveland, but I don't drive much in Cleveland. I'm not familiar with the area, so I was like, eh, I can wait on that. I decided to do Salamanca, New York, because I am familiar with that area. And this was at the Seneca Allegheny Resort and Casino. I don't gamble, so I've never been there, but I've driven by it enough times. I bought a lot of Beach Boys stuff at the local antique mall, so I thought, okay, I know this area. Um, it's a beautiful place, and the staff is super nice. Of course, you, there's either a giant parking lot or an enormous parking garage to park in. Those are kind of frustrating, but what can you do? Uh, huge venue, and really looked like it was about sold out. I had front row seats to this show, which I'm very glad I did, and I'll explain that later on. But it was kind of nice to see another Beach Boys concert, even though I saw one last Christmas. We know they've had a few staff changes. John Cowsill, the drummer. It's been replaced by, I think it's Jim Bolton? I forget his first name. I know Bolton's his last name. And Scott Totten's out, and replaced by guitarist John Wedemeyer. So I'm going to weigh in on their performances as well, and see what all is going on. Of course, um, it used to be you could, again, buy a backstage ticket, talk to Mike and Bruce and whatnot. Sadly, can't do that anymore. This tour is officially called the America's Band Tour. I only bought two t-shirts. I didn't have a lot of merch. No merch at the Owl concert, and very little here, but I did buy... Go in front of everything there for you. Here's the new logo. I always try to buy a shirt like this so I can point out which concert I was at. That's the back. Here's the front for you. It's a nice logo, I think. And the screen behind them had the very prominent American flag, you know, the, the official logo for the tour. And this shirt I'd seen before, but I'd never bought, so I thought, eh, I'd better buy it today. They were 40 bucks each, they've gone up in price, but I guess that's not awful, everything's expensive at a concert, so... It's a good picture of the guys. So that was all I bought, two new Beach Boys shirts, so I'll be wearing those in some of my future Beach Boys videos. We have several coming up. Rarities, uh, 50 big ones, a few other things. And um, so another outdoor show. And this one started late. It's supposed to start at 7. We didn't start to about 7.20. They had the big screen before with all the videos and stuff on it. And I got a set list at the end. This one I got from Tara Reichert, who does like the backstage tours, or she used to do them. You know, she's like the hospitality person, I guess, but she grabbed this for me. So we start with Do It Again. They did a nice job there after the little intro video. They've edited it down a little bit. Uh, but Do It Again, and we jump in the Surfing Medley, Surfing Safari, Catch a Wave, Hawaii, It's Okay, It's Okay really rocked. You know, the audience was kind of reticent to get up. Um, I will say it wasn't quite, you know, um, as maybe packed with older people as Al Jardine's was. There were a lot of kids, which was nice. I think that's good when young people come out. So uh, It's Okay was the song that kind of got the kids up and moving and stuff like that. And then we say, see uh, Rockaway Beach, of course. Something I wanted to cover this summer, but I don't know if I will. I might wait till next summer. Mike Love's solo album there. He did Rockaway Beach on that. And uh, Rockaway Beach, really upbeat, really fun to listen to. Nice job there. And you see after it, Surfing USA. Now our new drummer, Mr. Bolton, he was going crazy on the drums, jumping up and down, slamming on him and stuff like that. He had this weird stuffed flower mounted on one of them. I don't know what the story with that was, but he was going crazy. And I really liked that. He brought a lot of energy to the group. I think maybe kind of appealed to the young people a little bit more. I mean, John Cowsill was a great drummer and a great singer, um, but uh, I think Mr. Bolton is a worthy replacement. He did a nice job, I thought. So after the surf stuff, we have Surfer Girl. Now lately, Mike Love has come under some criticism because he always prefaces this song by saying, this song is gender specific. Uh, someday if I get a chance to talk to him again, I want to tell him, hey, when Annette Finicello did this song, she did it as Surfer Boy. It's not that gender specific, but what can you do? And you see Don't Worry Baby after that, did a nice job there. Bruce didn't have a lot to do, I noticed that. He played the keyboards and danced around some, and it sounded like at some points his mic wasn't even turned on. So I don't quite know if Bruce is just there along for the ride or whatnot. He didn't really get a showcase number. And then we jumped into the car songs. Now this show had no intermission, which is unusual for a Beach Boys show. Most of them do, unless maybe they're sharing a bill or something like that. But um, yeah, they played this set straight through, 35 songs. So 
that was kind of neat. So Mike Love said, time to hot wire the hot rods. That made the audience really happy. You see the, the new hot rod medley, Little Deuce Coop 409 shut down, Little Honda, which is, used to be like one of the first songs, now it's in with the car songs, and I Get Around. Yeah, that made the audience really happy. People were jumping up and down and dancing and stuff, and that's exactly what you want. In my room, so they slowed things down. Get you back, the version from Unleash the Love, the longer version. I don't think they do the original 1985 one anymore. Good to my baby. That's one that kind of came back in the live set more recently, and I, I think that's a good choice. Uh, Darlin, that went over really well. That was super upbeat. They had a lot of strobe lights and flashing lights and stuff. If you were epileptic, I could see that this concert probably wouldn't be for you, or if you're sensitive to flashing lights, not just epilepsy. But I noticed that there was a lot of, you know, flickering strobe lights and flashy stuff. Then we have Sail on Sailor. That was really nice to hear. I forget who sang lead on that, but um, that was good. I don't know what these numbers mean, by the, or some the little squares. Some don't have numbers, they have squares. I don't know what they mean, though. If you do, please let me know. I wish I remembered who did lead on Sail on Sailor. And then they talked about George Harrison, and Mike Love did Pisces Brothers, so another Unleash the Love song. I should note... Uh, Mike Love swore again, and that surprised me. He was talking about the Beach Boys were asked to play at a UNICEF event in the late 60s, and the curtain opened, and right in front of Mike Love, you know, front and center, Maharishi Madayashi Yogi, John Lennon, and George Harrison. And Mike Love said, well, I was like, and he swore a little bit, and the audience laughed. I was like, there are kids here, you don't have to do that. And we have our uh, pet sound stuff here. Golly Knows was done by Christian Love. He did okay by Sloop John B. They messed up the lyrics again. Either that or they're trying to change them. I don't know, to get rid of lines like, this is the worst trip I've ever been on. Maybe that's not seen as appropriate anymore. I don't know. Wouldn't it be nice? They did okay there. California Dreamin'. The real highlight for the audience here seemed to be that they played the original music video from the 80s. You know, the one that um, has like Roger McGuinn in it and stuff. And that seemed to make the audience really happy. They cheered when Roger McGuinn was on there. Who knows? And then California Girls, That I Kissed Her, done by Brian Eichenberger. He did a nice job. Better than he did on Don't Worry Baby. The New Wild Honey, which Bolton just went insane and was unhinged. So I, I like him, though. I think he, again, adds a lot of energy. John Wedemeyer, the new guitarist, I didn't really have any impression of. It feels like they didn't give him much to do. Maybe he kind of has to grow into the group a little bit before they give him stuff. Uh, do You Want to Dance There, a tribute to Dennis. All summer long, to me this was probably the low point. It just didn't sound good. I don't know, I think they need to work on like the arrangement, or maybe it was just a sound issue, but it sounded really uneven to me. I don't know, I, I didn't really care much for it. Uh, Help Me Rhonda, that went over well. They did that as kind of a medley with All Summer Long, which is the way it was done in 2012 for the 50th anniversary. Summertime Blues, which I've never seen live. They kind of based it more off Mike Love's version as opposed to like the original Beach Boys one from the 60s, or Eddie Cochran's, or there are so many covers of that song. Uh, but they tried to kind of make it, you know, interesting and fun. I think the kids can still relate to that song. So that was a good choice. Barbara Ann, everyone get up and dance. They had all these young women who were kind of milling around the front of the stage. They were dressed like 40s or 50s bathing beauty kind of things. Really nice young girls. And uh, they invited them up on stage to dance during Barbara Ann, except they would stop at one point and Mike and Bruce would dance. It was really odd. You'll see them in some of the photos at the end. I don't quite know what the story is with that. Uh, but Barbara Ann, of course, always goes over well, followed by Kokomo. Gotta love Kokomo. Good vibrations. And then fun, fun, fun is our big finale. You can see at the bottom is the date and stuff. This one's pretty rumply and it's been stepped on a few times, but you get what you get. So, all told, I was pretty impressed. It's a good show. You never let it be said that Mike and Bruce put on a bad show, because they don't. It was really fun. Yeah, it was mostly, you know, upbeat rockers, if you like the ballads and the more complicated songs. Eh, you probably wouldn't think too much of it. It certainly beats any kind of bizarro tribute. I found this CD on my way to Al Jardine's concert. I had to pick that up. Bluegrass covers of the Beach Boys. Who knows? So I like that we're getting, you know, still some authentic Beach Boys feel there, and, and the videos and stuff that play in the background are excellent as always. I sat almost front and center, and like everyone else, I ran up to the fence, you know, begging for stuff to see what I could get, and Christian Love started throwing his guitar picks indiscriminately, and I was finally able to get one. For all the concerts I've been to, I've never gotten a guitar pick until now, and I'm so glad 
that I finally did. So just the Beach Boys and some tie-dye on one side and Christian Love's name on the other. But finally so glad there. And then when I started screaming at Tara Riker to give me a set list, she did that. She was super nice and gave that to me. So I got it there. And all told, a nice venue. Both of them very beautiful outdoor venues. I mean, outdoor concerts you can really do in the summer, so you might as well do them. But uh, a lot of fun there. I sat next to a guy and his mom who were there, and they got up and danced and stuff. And that was, it was fun. A lot of families, a lot of kids. But it's good to get youngsters, you know, interested in the Beach Boys. So those are my concert reviews for summer, for, I should say August, not even summer, just August of 2023. Hope you liked them. If you have comments on solo albums like Postcard from California or Mike Love's 12 Sides of Summer, Please post them below. I should add that I bought this signed copy used. I think this comes from Al's website. If you make a charity donation to whatever charity he's championing, uh, he'll send you uh, this CD. I think someone else didn't want any more or wanted to unload it, so they sold it to me. Uh, but uh, even though I've met Al, uh, he did not sign that CD. Uh, it came pre-signed, or most likely stamped. So, hope you enjoyed this little twist, something different there. Next week we'll do Shining Time Station and then more Beach Boys stuff on the way, including Made in California. So, hope to see you there. Thanks again. So long.